Hello and welcome to Riga, Latvia for the next episode of South Pro webinar series. My name is Ivis Danowskis. I'm the product manager for the test and measurement business line. Today in studio with me is my colleague from technical support. Hello, my name is Edward Svarna and I'm technical support specialist with SAF Technica. Together we will show you how to prepare and carry out the successful line of sight verification procedure using Spectrum Compact RF Spectrum Analyzer from SAF Technica. In today's webinar, we will have a quick theory on uh, what is the, the radio line of sight, following with the link calculations to check the theoretical line of sight availability, follow, and then we will go on the, in the field to do, do the actual line of sight verification. Following that, we will have the results uh, for the summary and report uh, that we will do in the Spectrum Manager PC software. SAF Technica has test and measurement product line for RF field engineers consisting of RF spectrum analyzers and signal generators. In today's educational webinar, we will demonstrate how the spectrum analyzer and signal generator can be used for line of sight verification tasks in point to point microwave networks. The benefit of using the Spectrum Compact Spectrum Analyzer and SG Compact Signal Generator is the temperature range of these devices, which allows to work in both cold and hot environments, as well as ease of use, which allows quick assembly and configuration of system used for line of sight verification. We will also use the Spectrum Compact's built-in memory to store verification results for later review in Spectrum Manager PC software. Before we start with actual line of sight verification, let's first look at the Fresnel zone theory, which explains how radio signals travel between two points. In our case, between two microwave point-to-point -point antennas used for communication network. Radio signal does not propagate in a single beam. Nearly half of the received signal energy travels through the Fresnel ellipsoid. Any obstructions within the Fresnel zone can cause obstruction loss, which results in decreased signal levels, thus resulting in worse signal quality, which can affect the data throughput of microwave point-to-point -point link. Fresnel zone radius depends on frequency band and the link distance. In lower frequency, the Fresnel zone is wider, but for higher frequency bands, Fresnel zone ellipsoid radius is smaller when comparing the link of the same distance. In this example, you can see visualization of the difference between the radius of Fresnel zones for the 10 km point-to-point -point link. At 6 GHz, the radius of first Fresnel zone is slightly more than 11 meters and for the 18 gigahertz, it is about 6.5 meters. This means in, if uh, the Fresnel zone is not obstructed for the signal in lower frequency, it will also be free from obstructions for si uh, signals in higher frequencies in the same path. The link is considered to have a clear line of sight if the obstructions does not cover at least 60% of the first Fresnel zone. Therefore, it is necessary to verify if the path between two points has a clear radio line of sight. It has to be verified using transmitter and receiver. Other methods like using the flashlight on one side and the observer on the other might give false results as it is only representing uh, the verification of the clear visual line of sight, but not the radio line of sight including parts of the first Fresnel zone which might be obstructed. If you want to learn more about Fresnel zone and radio wave propagation, please follow this link to watch my colleague Anton Bezdel explaining it in the training course video. To ensure that radio line of sight can be verified, SAF Technica has created the line of sight verification kit, using which it is possible to verify that radio has clear line of sight starting at 6 GHz frequency band and above for distances up to 83 kilometers. Edward, why link planning is an integral part of uh, preparation process for microwave point-to-point -point link installation? Well, by doing the link planning, you can estimate the theoretical performance of the link and also check the theoretical line of sight availability. First of all, I would like to show you what the path looks like on the map. So we have two rooftops, we, we will call them as point A and point B. On the 
point A, we will place the spectrum compact kit and on point B, the signal generator kit. For the link calculations, we are using the pass-loss software where I already set the coordinates of our two rooftops. On the left side of the screen, you can see the point A and on the right, point B. Also, I already set up the parameters of our line of sight antennas. And to start the calculation, I will configure the frequency, which will be 6 gigahertz. And polarization will be the same as it is, vertical. Then I will configure the heights of the antennas. For point A, the height will be 25 meters and point B, 15 meters. Now we see that 60% of the first frontal zone, here it is, this blue curve, has moved up. And if we take a closer look near point B, then we can see that it is really close to the trees. So as a conclusion, judging by the calculation, we can not really say if the line of sight will actually be clear or not. Now let's calculate the expected receive signal level. To do that, I will need to set up a signal generator on point B. So I will set the TX power to 13 dBm, which is the maximum value for our HD compact signal generator, then press OK. Then I will add a one decibel of losses on each side, which are caused by losses in, in the cables and connectors. And as we can see in the table, the receive signal level is almost minus 47 dBm. Ives, I think it's time to show our viewers the content of the line of sight verification kit. Yes, let's do that. So here we have the radio line of sight verification kit set up in studio. On uh, this side uh, we have this SG compact signal generator side and uh, on the other it's a spectrum compact uh, spectrum analyzer side. So we will start with looking at the side of the uh, signal generator. So uh, here we have a uh, SG compact signal generator which is acting as a transmitter and it's connected uh, with the uh, RF cable to waveguide to SMA adapter further to the line of sight antenna and all the system is uh, fixed together to the mast with a dedicated uh, uh, mast mount. On the other side we have a very similar setup uh, which consists of uh, line of sight antenna, waveguide to SMA adapter, in this case uh, it's connected uh, to the spectrum compact spectrum analyzer and again we also have the mast mount to hold it uh, together to the mast. And each of those sites comes with a protective case for easy and safe transportation to the site. To demonstrate how the obstruction affects the signal levels received on spectrum compact side, we will have this quick demonstration. So one, while the path is not obstructed, the signal level is at min around minus uh, 20 dBm. Once we move the obstruction in the link path, this uh, signal level drops significantly. And now it's time for our team of engineers to undertake real-life line-of-sight verification tests. Hello, uh, my name is Ivis. Uh, I'm from South Technica and today we will be verifying the radio line-of-sight between this point uh, where we are planning to fix the antenna and the other side of the campus uh, where my uh, colleagues are with the signal generator and we will be verifying if we have a line of sight here. Uh, we continue with uh, fixing the <clears throat> mast mount to the mast. This is very handy since we uh, have uh, system which doesn't require any additional tools to fix it just uh, just the knobs so now we are fixing 
to the antenna. We definitely need spectrum compact, spectrum analyzer and the RF cable to connect spectrum compact with the antenna. So once I have the setup ready, I am doing the course alignment uh, intended uh, far side and then I, have a, uh, I will call my colleagues to start aligning and uh, verifying the line of sight. Now both engineers need to configure devices on their ends. Set the SG compact signal generator transmitting frequency to 6 GHz with output power of 13 dBm. On the spectrum compact end, the center frequency should also be set to 6 GHz and a minimum span function should be switched on to use the highest sweep rate. I know that the other side is uh, set, uh, the signal generator is set to six uh, gigs, so this is what we are also setting here. Um, so on, on right off the bat, we can see the signal, but uh, I know for sure, so it's not yet uh, to the level which we need for if we, if we have a line of sight. So now we will continue with uh, aligning the line of sight antenna to the uh, to the expected uh, signal value if we have a line of sight okay so we are then doing uh, the antenna alignment on uh, on uh, our side so we are checking uh, the elevation it's stuck at minus 51 uh, 52 yeah now i will do the alignment vertically based on the pre-planned checklist Engineers start with verifying the line of sight, assuming that the signal source generated by SG Compact comes from the most favorable position. 56, 52, 51, 51, 52, 51, 52, 50. It's jumping between minus 51 and 52. So it seems that we are not getting closer. In case this exercise doesn't yield in good results, Engineers can use the alternate location for SG compact end. Yes, yeah, in that position, yeah. I will uh, maybe, yeah, fix the antenna. I will try uh, aligning on my side. Uh, now we are do trying to get the line of sight in uh, uh, one uh, location where we, we, we suspect that there might be, uh, we have the visual line of sight of the other side, but uh, we suspect that the tr tree canopy might be in the way of the uh, uh, to, for the radio line of sight, and now we are trying to get to the calculated uh, level, which is minus 40, uh, 47. But uh, we are we are not succeeding. We are not getting close enough to that. So it it, it indicates for us that. Uh, Actually, the tree canopy is the, something that is blocking the radial line of sight, uh, at least partly the frontal zone uh, for, the, for, the line, uh, for the radial line of sight. So thus, we are not getting to the expected, uh, expected level of, 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 uh, of signal. Since the preferred signal source location, location number one on the SG compact side was rejected based on the parameters, engineers will relocate the signal source to the alternate location number two. Minus 48, 40, 48, 49, yeah, 48 now. Yeah, it's, now it's stable at minus 48 dBm. So, yeah, I, uh, I, I see, I, yeah, I, I have the signal at the minus 48, so it means that, yeah, we have the, the line, radio line of sight for those two points. And so now we are looking for the value on the power in band so this means we are measuring the full uh, what is the power for this full bandwidth and this is the the number we are searching for is minus uh, 46 but since we have the weather is uh, colder um, and uh, the device itself has at, at this, at this uh, kind of conditions at least plus minus 1 dB uh, measurement error and the generator also has the same measurement uh, error so this is then uh, we uh, we can consider this as a suitable result here
Welcome back to the studio. We have completed the hardest part of the process and all the verification data is saved on the internal memory of the Spectrum Compact. I wish how well to use those findings. We will review those results in the Spectrum Manager PC software. Here you can see the saved measurement data from the previous line of sight verification task. Here we see that uh, we have the signal uh, recorded uh, and uh, we have it at uh, the power in band measurement is at minus 47 dBm, which is the goal uh, signal level that uh, we needed to achieve to have the radio line of sight. Then we can follow with adding it to the report, which later can be saved for, for a later review and commissioning. In today's webinar, we looked at short theory of what radio line of sight is. We did the link calculation to check the theoretical line of sight availability and performed the verification in the field. And we finished with the result summary and report in Spectrum Manager PC software. Thank you for joining us on today's session. My name is Edward Svarn. And I'm Zdanovskis. See you next time. Bye.